welcome to week two of our Joining the Family course that we're on. Joining the family uh, is so important. We want you to feel part that this is your home. This is the place where you start to see, I connect here. This is where I'm going to grow as a disciple of Jesus. I'm committed to these people and these people are committed to me, cheering me on as I try to follow Christ in all that I say and all that I do. And so we have Matthias speaking to us last week and this week I've got my dear friend Andy Thorpe. I love this man. He's a man that I have so loved building church alongside and being in the Christian life with him now for a whole number of years. We've been elders in this local church together for 10 or so years. And Andy is going to speak to us this morning about being someone who is encouraging. Andy has instilled courage into me. He's caused me to be encouraged and built up in the way that I live my life for Christ and the way that I live my life to love other people. So it's such a joy to invite my dear friend, Andy Thorpe. Andy's gonna to speak to us this morning about what it is to be an encourager. Thanks, Andy, over to you. It's such a joy for me to be part of this, joining the church family um, course. Uh, today and to be able to communicate and share with you something of one of our cultures, the culture of being encouraging. You know, we live in a society where encouragement can be in short supply. In fact, we have a bit more of a leaning, particularly in this British culture, towards discouragement, towards pulling down and, and making it hard, you know, for people to to go on in life and to thrive in life because, because of negative words. And in this environment of social media and kind of faceless society where we can say things without having a personal responsibility, the power of our words almost takes on a, another whole area um, because we don't have a personal responsibility for the words that we share. And so as Christians, we know that we have a different culture to live up to. The Bible says an awful lot to us about encouragement, about putting courage into others. And so we want to take the guidance of the Bible and we want to learn to be brilliant at encouraging one another. We want to create an environment where people can receive healing because it's safe, because there's not a fear of what someone else is going to say or what words might cut us down but there's an environment of encouragement that allows us to, to flourish, to meet our potential in who God has created us to be. And so as followers of Jesus, we all need courage, you know, particularly in these days, to live out our Christian faith in this world. Courage to face the challenges that we all face day by day that will prevent us stepping out into the adventures that God has for us. And he has adventures for every one of us as we you know, can create that environment where people can thrive and have confidence to step out in him. Our words and acts of encouragement can shape people's lives, giving them the determination to keep on going whatever life might chuck at them. You know, the dictionary definition for encouragement just simply says this, something that makes someone more determined, more hopeful, and more confident. The word itself comes from a comb combination of the prefix en, E-N, at the beginning of encouragement, which literally means to put in, and the word core, which is a Latin kind of word that means heart. So the word encouragement literally means to put in to our hearts. So when we encourage one another, we're literally putting something positive, something of strength into somebody else's heart. And so we can see in that, that it's vital. And as Christians, we have a role in this world to put strength, to put courage into the hearts of those around us. How can we encourage? You know, most of the encouragement that we receive and we give is through our words. In fact, our words make up so much of who we are in our lives. In fact, 20% of our lives are spent communicating through words, whether we are verbally communicating, whether we're writing notes, whether we're texting or using our computers or social media in different ways. 
we're using words to communicate. And we know that the British uh, love talking about the weather. Uh, in fact, the Lloyd's TSB Insurance Group recently did a survey uh, of 2,000 adults and they found out that the average British person spends 49 hours a year just talking about the weather. 49 hours a year. That is two days, two 24-hour days spending talking about the weather. And this equates to around about six months over the course of a lifetime. Now, just take some of that, half of that, and turn those words that we're talking about, how bad the weather is today, or, oh, you know, isn't it bad weather outside, or how windy it is. If we could communicate in words of encouragement instead, wouldn't that be just amazing how we can use our words to positively build somebody up? You know, Solomon writes in Proverbs 15 to 20, 15, 25, how delightful is a timely word. It's so true. There are times in our lives we just need someone to speak something into us that's just going to be delightful to us. It's going to encourage us. You know, I have a file in my email inbox that's just called Encouraging Words. And I like to go to it quite regularly just to be reminded of encouragements that I've personally received from other people. Things that where people have come to me and they've said, thank you for doing this, or when you said that or did this, that was an encouragement to me. And our specific encouragement is so powerful when it's not just a well done, but a well done because that, when you did that, when you said that, that really helped me. And it's those things that help us to keep going and keep pushing on in our faith and our journey with God. And in this environment of the church, oh, wouldn't it be amazing if this environment was full of encouragement for one another? The theologian William Barclay writes this. One of the highest human desires is the duty of encouragement. It's easy to laugh at men's ideals. It's easy to pour cold water on their enthusiasm. It's easy to discourage others. The world is full of such discouragers, but we have a duty and a divine calling to encourage one another. Many a time a pat on the back, a word of praise or appreciation or thanks has kept a man on his feet. We need that. We need to be kept on our feet. We need to keep going, to keep enduring, and encouragement helps us to do that. Proverbs 18, Verse 21 says this, life and death are in the power of the tongue and those who love it will eat its fruit, whether life or death. Life and death in the power of the tongue. You know, the same electricity that cooked our toast this morning for breakfast that we enjoyed has the power to destroy as well. And our words have the ability to bring life or death. So the way we choose our words, the way we communicate, what words we use is so, so vital. The world doesn't prepare us really in any way, shape or form of how to handle words. In fact, we come up with these kind of little cliches like sticks and bones may break our bones, but words will never hurt us. That's rubbish. Words are so powerful. The things that people have said to us when we were younger or as we were growing up, have the ability to shape our lives. And so the word of God, words of encouragement, words that we speak to one another, have the ability to shape life. But we know equally they can crush and destroy. I read uh, um, an article in the paper just a, a while back. Um, you may even remember the story. Uh, a girl called Jessica Cleland, she was 19 when she took her own life on Easter Saturday a few years ago after receiving Facebook messages from two teenage boys who she considered friends saying that they hated her and that she was an effing whiner. Her parents said that Jessica's social media accounts had been flooded with horrible statements the night before she took her life. That's powerful, isn't it? That's hard to hear. 
that words have that ability to pull someone down. I don't know what's brought you to Kings. I don't know why you're here or how you've got here. I don't know what your experience has been up to this point, you know, whether that's been good or difficult at times. I don't know whether uh, you felt discouraged. And so maybe that's the reason that's brought you here. I don't know what the story is, but we do know this is that we really want to be a church where we have a strong culture of encouragement to build one another up. We know that as we do that, we will set a foundation for determination and for hope and confidence and a have a go kind of culture where, you know, it's okay to have a go and try and, 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 and step out without the fear of failure or being discouraged. Our words have incredible capacity to heal, to stir onwards, to, to help people flourish. You know, 1 Thessalonians 5 verses 9 to 11, Paul writes this, and I've just got it in the message translation because it says it perfectly. God didn't set us up for an angry rejection. Isn't that good to know? God didn't set us up for an angry rejection, but for salvation by our master, Jesus Christ. He died for us. A death that triggered life. Whether we're awake with the living or asleep with the dead, we're alive in him. So speak encouraging words to one another. Build up hope so you'll all be together in this. No one left out. I know you're already doing this. Just keep on doing it. Isn't that amazing? Paul's saying keep on encouraging one another. In Hebrews 3.13, the writer says, encourage one another every day. As long as it's called today, keep on encouraging one another. Hebrews 10.25 says this, let us not give up the habit of meeting together, as some are in the habit of doing, but let us encourage one another and all the more as we see the day approaching. We know that Jesus is coming back soon. We don't know exactly when that will be. But we know that the Bible says it's not going to be easy to live out this Christian life in those days and years before he comes back. And so encouragement is so important for us as we live out our life together. We need to encourage one another. We need to put courage into each other's hearts. To be true encouragers, we must learn self-forgetfulness. When we encourage others, we forget about ourselves. So in this culture of encouragement, I, wanna encu I want to encourage you to keep thriving, to, to, to be an encourager yourself. We want as a church family to be those that encourage others. And in doing that, our heart and our hope is that we can all thrive in what God has called us to do and who God has called us to be because this is a safe place where we can build each other up and we can flourish in all that he has for us. So thank you for listening.